right, welcome everybody back to our final large group session of the MCH 2021 annual conference. This is the last time we'll gather all together um, for this awards uh, ceremony. We're very excited for this, uh, this portion of our conference. To maximize this time, first I'm going to announce the awards and the winners and then um, hand it off to my colleagues for a conversation with those award winners. So. Um, I, I first want to uh, announce the Steve O'Neill Outstanding Organizer Awards. Our first winner is Tyra K. Thomas. Tyra is one of the original founders of the group Street Voices of Change, using her own experience to pull a community of advocates together toward a common goal. From the people that nominated her, Tyra is an incredibly dedicated organizer. She is able to gracefully use her experience with homelessness to help advocate for issues related to homelessness. Tyra knows that nobody is far from homelessness and she wants to ensure that anyone who is experiencing homelessness has dignified and safe shelter and that their experience will be brief and temporary. Tyra is committed, dedicated and consistent and she knows it shows up in so many ways for, for the community. She does this work with love and compassion. Additionally, her friend Sherry Shannon said, Tyra is strong, dedicated, supportive, a mentor, always patient, and most importantly, is always loving on others. Please join us in congratulating Ty Tyra on her accomplishments with the Steve O'Neill Outstanding Organizer Award. Our next winner is Sherry Reimers, who is the executive, interim executive director of the Onda Young Center. She was nominated specifically for her work in piloting and leading the formation of the American Indian Intertribal Youth Council, engaging American Indian youth who have lived experience with homelessness, the foster care system, adoption experience, and in juvenile justice systems. The American Inter Indian Intertribal Youth Advocacy Council was developed in response to the desire expressed by many young people to actively participate in systems change and advocacy efforts to ensure equity in housing, workforce development, education, and other policy areas specific specifically for Black, Indigenous, and people of color. From the folks who nominated her, I personally have always looked up to Sherry Reimers as a strong Native woman and a leader in our community. She has worked so hard for our youth and our community. Please join me in congratulating Sherry for her accomplishments with the Steve O'Neill Outstanding Organizer Award. Our next award category is the Bruce Bento Distinguished Service Award. And our first winner is Laura Birnbaum. Laura is, in the words of those that nominated her, a hero in the homeless response system. When there is a problem that needs solving, folks turn to Laura, whose first response is, let's pull together. Whether it's finding men mental health providers, meeting unmet basic needs, strengthening landlord and tenant re relations, or even making sure that folks are able to find their essential records, Laura is the key to ensuring that need, need is met. When we think of distinguished service, people that go above and beyond in every way they can, like Laura does, navigating fine details to making systems improvements, these are the qualities and efforts that exemplify the spirit of this award. Join me in congratulating Laura Birnbaum for her work as with a Bruce Bento Distinguished Service Award. Our next winner is Katherine Johnson, who, in the words of those that nominated her, is a fierce advocate for rural areas, leadership, empowerment, and for authenticity. Katherine exemplifies distinguished service in her work with both staff and people with lived experience. By day, she lines up new partnerships with hotels and mask makers, and by night, she comforts others and challenges them to be better and stronger with more authentic leadership. Whether there is an opportunity to step up, whenever there is an opportunity to step up, Catherine is there. Whether it's running the Northwest COC, starting pilot pro programs to end youth homelessness, or removing a systems barrier, Catherine leans into her work to strengthen her community. Catherine doesn't just sit in the comfort of an executive suite. She is doing the work that brings people together every day. Join me in congratulating Catherine Johnson for her work with the Bruce, Bruce Spento Distinguished Service Award. Finally, uh, our, our final winner is Tracy Berglund. Tracy will be leading Catholic Charities 
after 20 years of incredible service to Catholic charities and our community. When looking at her nominations, one theme kept emerging, the dedication she had to find a way to say yes. Whether it was responding to COVID safety precautions, leading complex capital campaign develop, developments, including a new Exodus II project, or re redefining what person-centered meant, Tracy has always been willing to find a way to say yes. Throughout her career, Tracy has looked beyond immediate needs to build, more, to build toward a more compassionate model of shelter. Tracy has touched the lives of tens of thousands of Minnesotans through her career. And we are thrilled to honor that legacy today with this award. I am now, now gonna hand it over to my colleagues, Matt and Zara for the next portion. Thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> and for those of you that uh, I may not have met before, uh, my name, as Rhonda said, is Matt Trainer, and I'm the Director of Organizing here at MCH. My name is Zara. I'm the Regional Experts Organizer here. We wanted to try something a little different this year and have a conversation with each of our award winners. So Matt and I are going to alternate asking a few questions just for the sake of time and to make sure that all of our award winners have a chance to share. Um, we are going to have about a minute to answer, and then Matt is also going to help us keep track of time. So the first question we have, uh, Sherry is going to start us off, followed by Tyra. And what is a moment or experience that you were proud to be a part of? And you are on mute, Sherry. Uh, yeah, being put on the spot to start things off, that's really <laughs> a lot of pressure. But um, I think it's actually two moments, but I'll take one. Um, back in the 90s, we had a much smaller uh, homeless issue in the Native community, and much of that was right around the Indian Center. And we took a um, culturally based um, a, a situation and we, um, we um, used culture and infused it into the Akichita Society. We figured if we took ownership of the property around us, that um, it would build um, more days of sobriety and less incidents of homelessness. And what they did is they actually took charge of the center and started cleaning up and they were starting to be hired um, under vouchers from the other organizations. And we saw many of our individuals um, walk, out of, um, walk out of homelessness and, out and into sobriety and really do some wonderful things. A minute is not a long time to answer something so intricate. Yeah, that's really incredible though. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Tyra, what's a moment or experience you were proud of? Thank you, Zara. I think the moment that I was most proud of is after Street Voices came together. Um, I, in the beginning, I was all by myself and then to come into a, um, what I would like to say, I found my tribe <laughs> that, there, that there's, that I'm not alone. And there was other people in the room that were experiencing what I was experiencing. And yeah, we had a lot of complaints. We had a lot of energy. We had a lot of tears and pain and, and to come up with solutions. And then we embarked on the first trip to the homeless day on the hill. That was a very proud thing to be a part of and, and to be there and see all of these folks from all over the state. It was like huge for me to, to understand that I am not alone, that, you know, and then in, in even now barking on the, the national level with homelessness. I think that was my most important moment to see all the folks from all over the state who don't even look like me sometimes and want to end homelessness. That was a major moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tyra. And up next, we have Laura. Thanks, Sarah. Tyra, you're a tough one to follow. Um, and this is a bit of a tough question as well. I would say we've had several momentous events and beginnings recently in our community from three ribbon cutting events um, for new housing developments, all deeply affordable, um, with the majority specifically for community folks who've experienced um, long-term homelessness and transitions. So that's been really, really 
amazing to see um, and be a part of, although minimally. Um, we're also beginning our work with a racial equity accountability project um, and have a phenomenal leadership team that I'm thrilled to be able to support in any way. So just really excited about all of the beginnings that our community is um, starting up. Thank you, Laura. And up next is Catherine. Um, I guess the moment I thought of is just when I first started uh, working in the homeless programs, we didn't have any homeless youth specific funding. Um, so it kind of got grouped into our adult programs, but it didn't, it never felt like it fit in the adult programs. And I remember doing uh, the Wilder survey and all of the youth that I had interviewed um, had identified that they had done something uncomfortable to um, keep housing. And that just really haunted me and, and felt like we needed to do better for um, our community and for our youth. And so uh, when we applied and received our first state homeless youth uh, grant, that was probably the moment that I was most proud of looking back. Incredible, thank you, Catherine and Tracy. Yeah, um, I'm um, proud of our collective provider response and our own response to keeping people safe um, during COVID. Uh, like many of you, uh, Catholic Charities uh, scrambled to redesign buildings and services um, due to COVID. Um, and in our case, it uh, was more than a thousand units of congregate site shelter and housing. Um, and what was incredible to me was, um, and still is and is every day, is our frontline staff showed incredible compassion, courage, and flexibility in uh, scary and still challenging times. And um, for me, I am so grateful uh, to those frontline workers at Catholic Charities and elsewhere um, for helping to keep um, the people we serve safe. All right, thank you for those wonderful answers. Uh, so for this question, Tyra will be kicking us off, followed by Laura. So what do you wish you had known when you first started in this field, some sort of advice or whatever it is that you would have wished you could have told yourself way back in the day? So Tyra. Mm, I had many thoughts about around this and I think the part that I would have known is okay what happens when people start listening to your story and now you have that power what do you do with it how do you use it how do you um navigate such energy of response and Gratefully, I have folks uh, um, of support with Street Voices of Change, and we learn together how to use that attention. Um, I didn't understand that at first. I just wanted people to listen, but I never thought about, well, what happens if they respond? <laughs> so um, I think uh, that was the part that I didn't know in the beginning. And then now here we are at this wards. Who knew that I needed a headshot? You know, I, our former director asked me to do a headshot. And of course, I have trauma around camera. So I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you want to use this for? And then we get here and someone said a headshot. And I went, oh, I wish I would have done that, that I'd be here. You know, but that is the power of lived experience at the table and that folks are listening. And I had to learn how to utilize that ear. Thank you, Tyra. Laura. Thanks, Matt. Um, I guess when I first started in my, my formal role, um, I was really clear that there wasn't much I did know. Um, and I guess I still feel that way the more that I, I learn. Um, I'm still learning and I, I always will be. Um, this can feel overwhelming at times, but um, it's also really grounding with the hope and intention um, to always come to this work with a true sense of curiosity and humility. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Now we'll go to uh, Catherine. Yeah, I sort of was on the same lines. I, I think I would say the more I thought I knew, the less I actually did know. Um, and I also wish I would have been 
better at just sharing space with people during hard and vulnerable times. I used to think you always had to say something or, or know what the right thing was um, to say or to guide or direct, but uh, really it's just, it's just showing up and sharing space. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, now we'll go to Tracy. So many things I wish I would have known, but I'm only going to talk about um, three. So um, I started out as a shelter advocate at St. Stephen's Shelter a long time ago. Um, and I wish I would have better understood the impact of trauma on our shelter guests. Um, when I started trauma-informed care, uh, changes of uh, stages of change, motivational interviewing weren't really there. And you know, those are critical tools for building relationships uh, with our clients. Um, I also wish I would have understood um, the perseverance required for advocating and creating change. Uh, when I was an advocate, I became pretty easily frustrated and sometimes immobilized. Um, but, what, but what I perceived as a lack of progress um, in getting humane shelter and more housing units. Um, while that was understandable, it really didn't uh, serve the cause, um, which kind of brings me to the last thing, um, the importance of celebrating success, whether that success is big, large, medium, small, um, it is so critical for us to celebrate our successes, create that momentum, and just lift our spirits. Thank you, Tracy. And to close out this question, we will have Sherry. So um, definitely my thoughts right along with everyone else, and certainly not trying to take the easy way out. But um, I have to kind of bank on what Tyra said, because she literally took the words right out of my mouth. And that's really, you know, um, utilizing the power of lived experience at the table and really being able to advocate change, though that was in the 90s when I started this work. And we were, at, we were in a different time where lived experience was not valued, but that would be one for me. Thank you, Sherry. For this next question, we are gonna start off with Laura and then followed by Catherine. What is something that gives you hope or fuels your passion? Thanks, Sarah. Um, lots, I think some of the things fuel both hope and passion and some maybe more just the passion side, um, but stories, the realities, um, injustices and the inequities that people experience um, is a big part of what fuels my passion. Um, but humans and community give me hope um, and fuel. Um, I feel really, really lucky about the community um, that I'm continually amazed and honored to work side by side with, um, advocates, providers, um, people with lived experience, Team, my team at St. Louis County, um, our community's determination, spirit, and authentic partnerships continually refresh and inspire me. Um, this often provides hope when people share their journeys, their stories of mistrust, misunderstanding, systemic racism, and oppression, but as well as resilience and love. Thank you, Laura. And Catherine? Um, I, I think for me, it's authenticity and connection, uh, which is funny that the folks that nominated me mentioned that in there, because I guess maybe I do talk about it a lot. But um, Brene Brown has this definition of connection. And when I came upon it, it just really resonated with me. And uh, if it's okay, I'll just read it. She uh, defines connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment, and they drive sustenance and strength from the relationship. So when I uh, came upon that, I asked our board members to lean into that and our staff to lean into that. And I try to, um, I, I think that gets me excited about the work that we're doing is just being authentically ourselves and working on, on connection, because I think connection really uh, crosses a lot of areas that, that's, that can be healing. Thank you, Catherine and Tracy. Um, yeah, I, I think it's also um, 
the resiliency of the people we serve. Um, Laura mentioned that as well. Um, it's been a privilege over the years to witness uh, numerous families and individuals overcoming numerous obstacles and adversity um, to build better um, lives for themselves. Um, that's been very uh, inspiring and amazing. Um, the other thing I would say is um, the increased uh, community commitment to ending homelessness. Um, now it's, uh, it, it's, you know, someone mentioned this, we have folks with lived in experience involved, um, local state government providers. Um, I know when I started in the 90s, uh, we had a mantra that, you know, homelessness is a uh, community problem and requires a community solution. Um, that mantra typically fell on deaf ears or elicited some measure of hostility. Um, and so I am really uh, galvanized um, by the partnerships that have happened over the years. And I still feel like there's so much we can do together um, as a provider group. Um, so I'm really um, excited and kind of hopeful about that. Thank you, Tracy. And Sherry? So for me, I think it's the attention that's been put on um, the attention of truth. Um, through um, the voice of lived experience, um, being able to bring that to, to the table and, and what it looks like, what it actually looks like, who it impacts, um, putting the real story on how this looks. Um, and it looks just like you and I, right? Um, granted, there's many levels of, of um, homelessness, but you know, how close when we hear the stories, how close it can be any one of us. And I think that's really important for our legislators to hear. And I think over the years that voice has been omitted. So I really think the story of truth is really important in the work we do. So it excites me. Thank you, Sherry. Tyra. Thank you, Zara. What gives me hope is after folks started listening, thing, things were happening. People were doing stuff. Um, agencies were doing st stuff. They were responding. And for Street Voices to Change, some of our uh, thing, goals that we have accomplished in Hennepin County, and, and, and for uh, now we're at the Capitol, at the Task Force on Shelter, um, our, our shelter residents bill of rights is in the sleeve. Um, we're constantly being sought after to bring lived experience to the table. All of that gives me hope. And then here we are today. I'm, I'm sitting here with a beautiful plaque. And this fuels my passion. It continues to give me hope even when I'm struggling myself, that we're doing this work together so people don't have to be outside or mistreated anywhere. This, this fuels my passion. Thank you so much, Tyra. Um, so this next question, uh, we wanted to make sure you all at least had an opportunity to share what you felt you need to share. So it's a pretty open-ended question. So is there just anything you want the attendees watching this right now to know? And the first person that's gonna answer that is Catherine, followed by Tracy. Yeah, I think, I think, um... I guess this is kind of a theme for me, but I just wanted people to know it's okay to just be who you really are inside. Um, to admit, admit if you don't know something or aren't good at something or, or need help um, on a certain task, I, I think it's just okay to say that. It, it's okay to own that and lean into that. And then um, I guess the other thing is just the importance of giving grace to people we work alongside and with 
because I think at the end of the day, we're all broken on some level, just trying to fit in and, and, and make it. So, um, you know, just grace and kindness is, is never too much, I guess. All right, so I'll just go to Tracy. Um, yeah, mine's more of a kind of a reminder um, for myself as much as anyone else. Um, so I'm very conscious that we're short a lot of um, housing units still. Um, so it's just that reminder, I, you know, um, the power of um, our advocacy um, is huge. Um, our collective advocacy has the potential to grow exponentially and create some really large change and hopefully more housing units for uh, folks still experiencing um, homelessness. Um, and so I really see advocacy as a, a key piece um, to what we do as well as the high quality services. So um, just wanna call that out. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder, Tracy. Uh, Sherry. Oh, you'll, yep, here you go. Be authentic. Um, when working with our communities, um, never judge, do it with passion, dedication, and never give up. Um, and take care of your spirit, because this is not easy work. Yes, well said. Um, Tyra. Yeah, Sherry, uh, uh, we're in each other's heads right now because <laughs> I was thinking about this last night and um, the audience are advocates, folks with lived experience, agency is, is listening. And yeah, hurt people hurt people. I've heard that, right? And then I heard something not too long ago that broken people help broken people. And so we all have something that has harmed us in some way because we're human. How little or big you might think it is and compared to other folks, we bring a healing spirit and help each other. I heard a story here at church not too long ago where there was a line full of folks who were in pain and someone an Asian pilgrim comes into the room or comes into the pharmacy, they're in the pharmacy and he's limping and no one moved. They allowed him to get to the front of the line and allowed that pharmacist to care for that person's need. So just taking care of ourselves in the midst of that and care for each other. We belong to each other. Thank you, Tyra. Uh, and now to wrap up this question, Laura. Thanks, Matt. Um, I had I had a bunch of other things I thought I would say, but then I just looked. I have a postcard that someone sent me a year ago, and it just says, um, "Just show up, be brave, be kind, rest, try again." I'll end with that. Thank you, Laura. That was a great way to end this. So I wish we could sit here and talk forever. Uh, this has been so insightful, but we are at our time. Uh, so I'm gonna pass it back to Rhonda. Well, I think you could probably, everyone listening can um, just see and hear the passion, compassion, um, and the reasons that these um, nominees were selected this year for our awards. Um, so just a couple of last um, items before you move to your last session of the day. I want to thank you again for being part of the conference. I'll watch your email next week for a conference evaluation and your certificate of attendance. Um, we will also gather up the presenter materials and send those out to folks um, over the next couple of weeks. It might take us a little time to get some of those PowerPoints and um, other information, but we will uh, follow up and, and get those. And um, just want to thank all these award winners for sharing this space with, with us today. Um, we're so proud to be in partnership with you. And um, I hope everybody enjoys their last session.